You can't always get what you want You can't always get what you want You can't always get what you want But I know that you wanted me to cover this song, so so here we are. This is a this is a continuation of last time where we talked about I can't get no satisfaction, and I was talking about this kind of being like the answer to satisfaction. Satisfaction came out in 1965, was the number one hit. Um, this song, you can't always get what you want. <clears throat> was came out actually July 4th 1969 it was recorded in 1968 though and uh it uh actually went nowhere it was the b-side of honky tonk woman um women and it it uh initially didn't go go anywhere and then later some years later it it charted and it became one of the rolling stones most famous songs um, <clears throat> we're going to go over the lyrics, talk a little bit about the song. Um, the, uh, John Lennon, who knows if it's true, but it, it, there's probably some truth to it. This is on the, this, the Stones album, Let It Bleed. Obviously that was, um, probably some, um, you know, it was the Stones' answer to Let It Be. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if the Beatles had already broken up by the, by the time the song came out, but John Lennon said that the, the Stones were copying the Beatles and, and You Can't Always Get What You Want was uh, Jagger's answer, not answer, but his uh, imitation of Hey Jude. If you listen to both those songs together, you, you do see a lot of similarities. Um, <clears throat> hey Jude did not use a choir. Um, and uh, I, th I think the choir in the song, in the Stones song, was, was very effective. And so was the French horn, played by Al Cooper, who also played the organ on the, on the song. Um, let's read the lyrics. If anything more comes up about the history, I'll, I'll mention it. Written by Mick Jagger in, in one night playing guitar in his bedroom. It's a very simple song. You know, the chords are very easy. C, C to F and, and D. Um, I saw her today at the reception, a glass of wine in her hand. I knew she would, she would meet her connection at her feast, feet was her footloose man. I always thought it was was a footloose man. Um, now, at her feet was a footloose man. You, you, you might. I mean, it's a play on words, obviously. Um, footloose means, you know, a guy who's dancing. Um, but maybe Jagger means it differently, and we'll see when it gets to this, the last verse, which is a recapitulation, but it's not quite a recapitulation of the first verse. Uh, but let's wait till we get there. So at our feet was a footloose man. You, ca you can't always get what you want. Now, I knew she would meet her connection at her feet was a footloose, her footloose man. Her footloose man perhaps was not her connection and she didn't get what she wanted. What exactly he ma means, let's, let's wait a moment before we... I'm, I'm the same as you here. I, I've been listening to this song for years and I don't always, you know, I usually do not think deeply about the, the lyrics, but that's what we're doing here. Um... You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you'll find you get what you need. It's a very profound statement. It can be read, you know, superficially, um, but it also can be read 
on in the most profound way, way which is um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I, w I went down to the demonstration. It seemed to be happening a lot in the '60s, but it ha it's happening all the time. Um, so, so first you got the reception. Now you got the demonstration. To get my fair share of abuse. Um, why? Apparently, because you know when you protest at a demonstration. <laughs> The cops or the authorities, um, you know, do what they can to stop you. Um, singing, quote, we're going to vent our frustration. If we don't, we're going to blow a 50 amp fuse. Sing it to me, honey. <laughs> so that's what they were singing at the demonstration. We've got to vent our frustration. Vent our frustration. Um, so, and if we don't get what we want, uh, we're going to get very upset and, uh, and then, you know, if you, if you, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you get what you need. Okay. And then, and then he goes down to the drugstore. I went down to the Chelsea drugstore to get your prescription filled. I was standing in line with Mr. Jimmy, and man, did he look pretty ill. By the way, there was a there was a, a Jimmy, a Mr. Jimmy, who claimed that he gave Jagger the uh, the words "You can't always get what you want." I think I think Jagger denied that. Um. We decided that we would have a soda, my favorite flavor, cherry red. I sung my song to Mr. Jimmy. Yeah, and he said one word to me, and that was dead. I said to him. Now, cherry red. It's the color of blood. Um, and that comes up later in the song. Um... Now, I sung my song to Mr. Jimmy, and he said one word to me, and that was dead. He didn't like the song. <laughs> was it this song? Maybe he, say, he sang this song to Mr. Jimmy, in which case Mr. Jimmy didn't give him the line. He gave the line to Mr. Jimmy. Uh, so um, he sang a song to Mr. Jimmy that Mr. Jimmy didn't, didn't like, apparently. Um, and so he sang, you can't always get what you want, Mr. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimbo. But if you try some time, you get what you need. All right. And that's, uh, that's when the song really, uh, reaches its climax. It's the third verse. Um, and maybe there was something there in that third verse, you know, that's where you got to think about. You know what Jagger was thinking when he wrote this. You know it it does climax at that point. What was what in that third verse was somehow um, climactic enough to climax? If you get my meaning there. All right. Then he goes back. And by the way. Um, that third verse is a little different than the other two verses in that it, it it has an extra it has an extra four lines in it. That's interesting too. Goes back to the to the first verse. I saw her today at the reception. The same words, right? But it's different. In her glass was a bleeding man. Whereas before it was a glass of wine in her hand. Now, again, you got the red, the red wine, apparently, right? Now you have um, in the cherry red, right? Cherry red cola um, or soda, cherry red soda. I, you know, I've heard <laughs> for as, 
as long as I've heard this song, I did not think of all these connections until until right now. This is why we're doing this, so so we can, you know, this is like songwriting analysis 101. Uh, I would love to hear your comments. Uh, and, and please, you know, forgive me for springing this on you. <laughs> um, so, I saw her today at the reception and her glass was a bleeding man. Could have been Mr. Jimmy for all we know. <laughs> she was practiced at the art of deception. Well, I could tell by her blood-stained hands. Sing it! She was practiced at the art of deception. Finally, he, he rhymed something with reception, right? At the beginning, it was connection. It was a slant rhyme, but now he's got deception. How does he know that she was practiced at the art of deception? I could tell by her blood-stained hands. He knew that she, she offed her, um, her footloose man, maybe. <laughs> she offed that guy. You can't always get what you want. It's a very cool song. It's definitely, you know, even if, even if Jagger was a freaking copycat and he copied the Beatles at every turn, he wrote some amazing songs. You know, you got to give it to the guy. He, this, this is just as good as Hey Jude, if not better. Especially the whole production of, of the whole song, you know, with the, with the French horn, which is ma magical, and the choir, and the organ, and the, the very nice guitar, rhythm guitar, just a, it's a joy to listen to, it, and it's a song that will live forever. You know, let's just call it what it is. Um, it's why the Stones are the Stones, and the Stones are still, they're still rocking after all these years. How many years has it been? At least 60, 60 years. When are they going to fucking die? I mean, Charlie Watts died. Brian Jones Probably some other members that I, I'm not aware of. But uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are still around. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You wrote, you wrote some amazing music. Gotta, gotta give it to you. Um, anyway, you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you get what you need. Now, that's... That, that line itself is, you know, it's a, from a spiritual perspective, that that's it right there. You always get what you need if you really have the eye to see. Whatever's happening is what you need for your, to see what you need to see, to understand what you need to understand. Um, I don't know if, if if Mick Jagger, you know, he was still a young man at that point. Did he, how deep did he go with this idea? I mean, I th I would think to write these songs, he he was a very deep thinker. He had to be. Um, but that's a question. That's an open question. You can't get no satisfaction. You can't always get what you want. On Buddhist in Buddhist terms, let's 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 bring it to the um, the first noble truth of Buddha, which is uh, dukkha, right? Suffering. Life is suffering in the sense that there's no lasting, nothing lasts. Everything is temporary. Everything is impermanent. We try to hold on to things, and we can't hold on. You know the. Everything is fleeting, fleeting pleasures, also fleeting pains. Which nothing brings us lasting satisfaction. 
What does bring us fulfillment? Personally, I think that, that, that music, you know, I think we all know that music gets, gets close to it. You know, it reminds us of, of, uh, the, the spiritual reality behind it all. And, uh, yeah, this channel is called the Gospel of Rock, and we're 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 trying to go deeper into into what is really wrong. As Van Morrison, you know, once sang, <laughs> probably still does. Um, trying to get down to what is really wrong, and and understand what is all right, and that it is all right, and that I think that's you know, it's, this song is another way of saying it. Everything is all right. <laughs> Once again, it's all it's all all right. You, you, you're not you don't always get what you want, but but if you really look at it, it is what you really want because it's what you need. Now, that's easy to say, much harder to accept and to live. And we'll continue with this as we go along. And I'd love to hear your, your thoughts and comments, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Rock on. Bye-bye.